Let's take a look how we can create a tattoo for the Genesis 8.1 figure in Substance Painter. Uh, this here is Fred. Hello, Fred. How's it going? He has this cute little bear on his arm, and that is not painted in onto his skin texture. That is, in fact, a geoshell. So I can go and enable and disable that. Super easy. I can load that in. I can also make that more or less intense on his skin, so I can kind of blend that in if I wanted to. And that is, of course, only possible if you have either an LIE or a geoshell texture there. And I'll show you how to set that up. Uh, it's a little bit involved and complex. There is an easier way to literally just paint this on top of his skin texture and then replace the skin texture, but that gives you much less flexibility and uh, you probably want that as a separate thing. And that's, you know, I've had a few questions and so let's have a look how we can do that. First of all, the tattoo itself. I've made this in Mid Journey, and this is just a cute little white fluffy teddy bear, and I've removed the background here. And you can use the resulting PNG with the transparency channel and paint on top of the skin, but that won't give you the separation that you need to create the alpha cutout. So for that, you need a separate opacity mask, and usually you don't have that, so you need to create that. And Substance Painter needs that so that that can basically paint in the cutout of the bear. So in Photoshop, we can make that happen basically by adding a black background behind the object that fills in all the transparency and turning the foreground object white. I have a shortcut that can do that, but it is super simple to do. You go and create a little black background over here with solid color and we'll paint that. We'll just make that black, super easy. And then you go and drag this behind your object and then on here on your foreground layer you go to blending options and you set the foreground color overlay to white so pick white here and then make sure the opacity here is set to 100 percent and then that is your opacity map so you need the transparent png as well as the opacity map in order to use that in substance painter with that said let's go and export I'm going to go and get rid of this GeoShell. So we're going to go and create this from scratch again. I'm going to go and export Fred twice. It's not strictly necessary. Once is just the OBJ so that we have something in Substance Painter and one is just for the skin textures that are not strictly necessary, but you can go and you get some benefits from just visualizing how that works. So I'll head over to File, Export, and I'll go and make a new folder on my desktop here so that we have it all in one Tat en. I'm going to go and make another one in German later, maybe with a Genesis 9 figure. I'm going to call this one Fred No Mats. And this is important that we go and scale doesn't matter. I'm going to use Modo Scale here. I'm going to use filtered objects here so that I have none of these attachments in my OBJ. I'm going to go and disable right surfaces here. And this is important that we don't export his surfaces because if we do, and then I'll hit accept. So he can be a custom character, he can be morphed, he can be posed, and he can have high resolution on. We don't need the low res version in this case. So this gives us the mesh. And uh, what this doesn't give us is anything on the surfaces tab. So we don't have any of his skin material zone. So we don't have arms, body, cornea, ears, and all that, because if we had that in Substance Painter, it will create a whole texture set per UDIM tile per surface. So totally overkill, and we don't want that. That's why we're stripping this out. But we would like to retain his textures, and that's where we can export him again with file export and then we use the same settings we'll call this fred with mats and we're not actually going to use this obj all we're going to do is under here under right surfaces we're enabling that and we're going to say collect and this is going to go and write out all his diffuse textures into a directory and the rest we can keep here and boom that's that so as i said we're not going to use this obj we're going to use the one without mats but we're going to use the textures that come in with fred it's an optional step, so it's not strictly necessary. But if you do that, you have a visual reference of where your tattoo is going to go. Head over to File, New. I'm going to go and pick the Metallic Roughness Alpha Blend template here. Document Resolution. I'm going to set that to 2K. And technically, we don't need normal maps. But if you had them, you would want to set this to OpenGL because IRA works with OpenGL. Then over on File, we're going to go and select our Fred Nomads here and hit open. And then 
at the bottom here under import baked maps we can go and import the textures that that studio has exported here let's go do that so that is here under maps we don't really need all of them we just need the arms the body i don't need the eyes and the eyelashes and all that just the face the head at the back there and his legs so i'm going to go on control select all of those hit open and then that's where they all are that's it we can go and hit ok and a few moments later our fred should show up perfect so optional task let's set up the skin textures first and i'm going to go and remove that regular paint layer here head over to assets and I'm going to go and have a look at my libraries here and just say project and then go and remove the imported thing here and these are all my textures so in order to set them up all I need to do is left click and drag those onto his body and no matter where I put them they're all going to snap in place I'm going to select base color here where they need to be so substance painter is clever enough to say hey that displays on this udem tile but technically it's going to put it on every udem tile so we have i think eight udem tiles on genesis 8 we have five on genesis 9 and the principle is the same for genesis 9 by the way so we head over to layers here and this little square that is the geometry masking feature so everything that's now white i don't want that to be white i want the arm texture to not be displayed on there and although we don't see a texture we do see white and that's going to get in the way as we stack up our materials so i'm going to go and click into this square here and I'll see this is displayed on every Udem tile. So technically what I need to find out is which Udem tile are the arms. So I'm going to click on the arms and it says, okay, that's Udem tile number five. Technically I've now masked the arm. So this is the opposite of what I want. So in order to toggle that, I can go and alt select this Udem tile and that'll disable it on every other Udem tile and just leave the arms intact. And that is what I have to do for every surface here. I know it's a little convoluted, but that's the way we roll here. So left click and drag the body over base color. The same would be true for the normal maps. You could go and drag the normal maps in just the same. And the same here. So I'm going to go and see what the body is. Body is three. Alt select that. Then we have just the body. And if I don't do that, like say with the face, I go and say base color here with the face. It appears there, but the trouble is now if I look at my layer stack, I can't see the arms and the body. So that's why we need to go and use this geometry masking feature. So once again, that is number one. Alt select, invert that. And now I can see all the other bits and pieces are coming through. That's the reason why we're doing this. So another one here, the head, that's this texture. Also base, that's that. Layers. Ka-ching, and I think that is number two, isn't it? Yes, it is, perfect. And then one more, that's for the legs. Legs go here, base color, legs, and that is Udem tile number four, perfect. So that'll work so far. I'm gonna go and click off this geometry masking and just select any of these fill layers and then we see all his skin textures in all his glory the only other thing i'm going to do is and that's just me being pernickety i'm going to create a new fill layer and just take care of the shininess here because i don't like for him to be so shiny so i'm going to call this one roughness and in here i'm just going to use the roughness channel so again clicking it means it'll be disabled but toggling it alt left clicking it will disable everything else and just leave that in place and i'm going to go and crank up the roughness value to something like 0 0.7 0 0.8 so then you know his shininess is going to go away there we go to keep things organized i'm going to go and select all layers hit Control g and group them together and this is going to be my skin so now i have it all neatly tidied up in one group here i can go and disable the skin if i don't want to see it and that's going to be a major benefit okay now let's go and talk about the two options of creating a tattoo inside substance painter one is stencil painting so that's basically moving a 2d stencil over your 3d viewport and then painting the tattoo in 
that is one option. The good news is that it's really easy to do. The bad news is if you find you need to make a change, you basically have to recreate the whole thing and throw away what you have. You can't amend it. You can't make the same stencil a little bit larger. You have to literally rub out what you have and start again from scratch. And hence, that is not such a great idea. So the second option that's a bit better is warp projection. So I'll show you both options and you can pick which one you like best. The first one I'm going to show you is the stencil painting. So I'm going to go and create a new paint layer for that. And I'm going to call this one stencil tattoo. And the way that works is that we switch over from our default paint mode here to projection. And that gives me that stencil here. And in order to load something up there, I need to import my tattoo. Could have done that in the first step, totally forgot. So go back to assets, click that little plus icon and add resources. I have that in my test folder here, which was tattoo test. There we go. That's my bear. So I'm going to go and import the bear as well as the opacity map. And I'm going to say this one is in fact an alpha, that's the opacity map. And this one is in fact a texture. And I'm going to put all those into the project that I'm currently working on. There we go. So the bear goes into my base color down here. That is that base color, but also I need that opacity map. I mean, I don't have to use it. And if I'm just going to go and use it without it, just to show you what the problem is, I can go and move thread around whichever way I want to have it. Maybe I want the tattoo to be on his chest like so. And then in order to move the stencil, I can go and hold S and then you can go and right click to make it larger or smaller. You can left click to rotate it. And I believe you can middle click to move it. And that's that. So scaling, rotating and moving. Uh, position it nicely maybe like this something like that just for just for now and then as you as soon as you let go of the s you can just left click and drag over that and then you paint that layer on there so the problem now is that this would look good i'm going to go and switch over to my paint tool to get rid of the stencil you can see the tattoo is now on his chest and this is good and it's also on a separate layer here so that's good i can enable and disable it but there's no real way to separate it if i export the skin textures out now i have a mixture of the skin and the bear and if i go and switch the skin off well now i have a mixture of kind of gray and the bear so that's still not exactly what i need so i need one other thing and that is essentially a way to make everything transparent and for that I can use another fill layer. In fact, I'm going to put that underneath my tattoo. I'm going to call that opacity. And on that, I'm going to go and disable everything else and just leave the opacity layer and then turn this value from white all the way to black. And you can now see everything is transparent. And this is kind of good news because if I were to export this out, I don't get any of the skin which is nice, or the grayness here. I don't get that. But the problem is also, I now also don't get the bear. So my, my tattoo is also not going to export because that doesn't have its own opacity channel that could be masked in this case. So that is, that's the problem. So I need to go and uh, do my stencil tattoo again. And in fact, I might go and just rub it out, first of all or delete the layer, that's also totally fine. And so now we don't have a tattoo anymore. Let's go back to projection mode. And here's my stencil again. But with it here, in addition to the color channel, I'm gonna go and grab an opacity channel. And in here, I'm gonna add my alpha map uh, from the tattoo. So left click and drag that into the opacity channel here. And now if I go and paint with my stencil, maybe uh, like, like so, something like that. Now if I paint with my stencil, I'm gonna go and paint in an alpha channel as well. And you can see the craziness here happening that his skin texture behind me is basically getting transparent, but that's perfect. That's exactly the cutout that I had bargained for. Perfect. Let me go and switch back over to this. And now we see this is transparent and um, basically cut a hole into Fred's body. This is kind of perfect. So if I go back to layers and if I now go and disable the skin or leave it enabled, just enable my opacity layer here, everything turns invisible and only my bear keeps 
coming out and that is now what will be on my exported texture. So this is what I need to make that geo shell without mixing it with the skin tone. So that's the stencil tattoo and the whole principle behind the opacity here. Let me go and disable that bring Fred back and disable my stencil tattoo and let's have a look at the warp projection and how we can make a tattoo with that and why that might be better for us if we wanted to make some changes. So I'm going to go and create a new fill layer for that here and I'm going to call that one warp tattoo just so that we know you know what that is and there's a special mode here that i can use so the fill layer now takes its own texture so in our case we only need the color channel and we also need an opacity channel so alt click on color and then add the opacity channel to it go back to your assets and then bring in the cute bear both as the base color and as the opacity and that looks kind of terrible it's not exactly what we want to see but that's okay we're going to go and uh, deal with that in a second maybe just for placement let's disable the opacity channel just so that we can place the tattoo a little bit better so right now under properties here i can see that the projection is currently set to uv projection and that is not what we want we want to go and set this to warp projection up here and when we do that, my manipulator changes and I can see that the whole thing is now not projected on the UV tile. It's now going to be projected like, you know, a decal, so to say. So that's good because now I can go and move it. Uh, I think Q enables and disables that little manipulator. And then W, E and R swaps through these things here. So move, rotate and scale. So I'm going to go and move this up and also scale it down because, you know, if we wanted that maybe on his arm or maybe on his chest, just as an example, that's, that's kind of nice here. Make that a bit smaller, put it up a bit move it out and um, it, it behaves like a decal so us having a three-dimensional object we may need to increase the projection depth a little bit projection depth is up here point 0.1 is the default point 0.3 i'll use uh, you can also use something larger like point 0.5 the thicker that is the heavier it is for substance painter to to do this to render this like while you move the viewport so we can also do a bit of rotation like so that it basically just gets projected onto the flat bit of his chest and um, maybe i'll put this on a seam here on his arms what do you think or maybe just on his belly maybe just on his belly i'll do that i'll do that so rotate it around and then go move it to his belly there we go this is our projection tattoo there boom perfect so that's it placed and if we now go and add the opacity channel to it again we can see it's the same thing i'm basically deleting parts of his body and that's exactly what i need because the moment i go and switch on the opacity this is what i'm going to export and this is exactly what i need for my geo shell or the lie so the advantage of this is that if you save your substance project as is and you get directions from your art director who says, hey, this is the perfect position, but could you move it left a little bit with the stencil tattoo, you'd have to go and rub this out and do it again but with this you can just open up your substance project and go hey a little bit further to the left or the right no problem at all i can totally do that and you know that's why on more complex things this might be the easier way to go because you have a non-destructive process that you can bring back and iterate over so regardless of which one you choose when it comes to exporting our textures there's a couple of things that we need to do so first of all we need to enable that opacities and, and everything else disappears perfect so now head over to file export textures and this is a bit of a super convoluted menu so this, this is always something that i never really enjoy the output directory is going to be on my desktop of course so i'm going to go and put that into tat en substance maps that's perfect that's exactly where i want that to be and my output template is going to be pbr metallic roughness so this is what i like infinite dilation is fine and the size i'm going to go and override this so that it's 4k notice i didn't bake any maps before we did this because that's not necessary that is only applicable if you do anything with with depth information and we just used uh, flat color so it's all it's all good here 
So on the output templates, I want to make a change. Because I picked PBR metallic roughness, I need to find that. So the default is Amazon Lumber Yard, which has nothing whatsoever to do with what I've picked on the previous page. A so highly convoluted menu here. Super don't enjoy that. So I have to go and select PBR metallic roughness. And I see a lot of other maps that I don't need. So I'm going to go and delete those here with this little X icon. Uh, these are kind of emission and normal map, metallic map. I don't have that information, so I'm going to go and uh, and get rid of that. I don't even need the opacity map, but even though I do, I do have one. I want to make another change, like I've showed you with the tattoo going in. All I need is the base color and an alpha channel. That's already pre-selected, so that's perfect. This comes from the initial template we've used, the alpha blend template uh, in the beginning. And then under list of exports, we can see what it's doing doing here so it goes still showing there we go if you just select off it and on it again then it goes and makes that change we still do export seven tiles but it's only the base color for every tile and that's what we want so we go and export that give substance painter a minute and then we'll have a look at what's come out so if your tattoo goes over multiple udem tiles you need that so if i had to put it on the shoulder like i've shown you in the beginning in das studio that actually went over two udem tiles i think ours currently is only on one i'll go and save settings here and then go into my trusty windows explorer and have a look what those maps look like there we go so the most of them are black but one of them has that cute little bear so i can go and delete the ones that have nothing on it and just use the ones that have something on it so in our case this is a transparent one with the bear if i go and open that in photoshop this is what it looks like this is where it got projected so it's pretty much the same situation as i had before i've got a transparent background and a tattoo projection on the foreground and das studio will need that opacity map as well at least for the geo shell we need that so we might as well create that again like we did it uh, here with the tattoo in the first place so we need a black background behind that black check you can also set up a shortcut for that uh, which i've done so it literally is just one click if you do this more often it's it's easy to do that uh, and white for the foreground this is what we need for the opacity map let me go and save that out I'll just put it into substance maps and I'll call this one OP with the rest of whatever it was called. And then we can go and set this up inside Das Studio. So here's Fred. I've removed his previous geo shell and we can basically go and start from scratch. So LIEs, I'm not going to go through it here, but you would do that on the base texture on the surface here. Literally, you'd go into the body uh, assuming it is the body and under base texture this is where you go and then you choose layered image editor and that's where you'd apply your tattoo over there for a geo shell you need to go and create the geo shell here with fred selected and then that dialog will offer to parent it to the current figure let's do that here it is he turns white and we don't need most of these surface zones so i can go and switch them off uh, that's under shell under visibility i wouldn't use face groups use surfaces for that so we don't need the arms or any of the other things here we only need the body because i think that's the only one where he's got that tattoo as i said on the previous one that i've shown you i had the body and the arms because the tattoo was literally here so we had two maps there so with that in place let's go back to the surfaces tab and then select well let's have a look at one of them you can see that the surface properties here look a little bit different to what you might expect and that's because geo shells as of das studio 4.21 still come in with the rsl material so they're made for 3d light materials since we're re probably rendering an eye ray i'm going to go and select all of these head over to presets and to shaders and to eye ray and i'm going to go and double click the eye ray uber base here and that will now swap the shader out for an IRA Uber shader. So if we now look at these, the surface properties look different. And now we can go into the base channel and under base color, I'm gonna go and browse to the map that Substance Painter has exported. So under TAT EN, Substance Maps, this is the one that comes directly from Substance Painter here with the alpha channel. And there it is, that's the bear.
And here's the problem. This is why we need the opacity map. I still see other residual stuff here that is kind of shining on his body. And this is why we needed that opacity map. So under geometry, also in the same texture, under cutout opacity, this is where we can go and either turn this completely off or completely on. But now, of course, we have a black body and this is what we need to mask off. Thankfully, we have that opacity map that we've just made in Photoshop. That's this one here. And as soon as we apply that, we have an isolated, cute little bear. And you can adjust all the other values like, you know, roughness and, and all that. And also you can blend it in. So as you, if you now tweak the cutout opacity, you would go and basically fade the whole bear in and out. And the good thing is the moment you switch off the geo shell, it is now completely gone. So quite nice. There we go. That's how you do that. And just for completion, if you wanted to save this out, it'll be a wearable preset. So if you needed to save that just the geo shell you would select thread i believe i think that's how it worked under file save as and then we have a wearable preset and we can go and try that out if i go and make another folder here and call that das scenes then in here or if you had a product you would you would put that into the appropriate place so i'll call this one bare geo shell and then here you can select what you want to include in that so you disable everything except for the geo shell you can also include poses with a wearable if you like but that's yeah, that's all we need hit accept and then that has saved that out and it's now going to be loadable in uh, if you wanted to ever bring that back i think okay here's the moment of truth i need to go file merge i think with fred selected bare geo shell let's go and open that and see if it works and boom perfect it works so notice that if you hadn't had fred selected if i just remove this if i don't select fred i'll go and say file merge and then i'll go and say bare geo shell then this is likely not to load because it doesn't know what yeah there we go it doesn't load this because it doesn't reference the geometry so let's go and do that file merge with fred selected bare geo shell and boom there we go so that is how you do that and i know it's a little bit convoluted and you had to do these opacity maps there twice in photoshop but that is a good way to get reusable tattoos out of substance painter for anything that you want to use in das studio for the genesis 9 figure this works exactly the same for any other figure generation as well i hope you learned something i hope you had a lot of fun if you do have any questions within reason then please put them in the comments and i'll see if i can answer them thank you so much for watching i'll see you soon take care bye bye